hey what is up everyone i hope all of you are doing great and in today's question we have a uniform dielectric hollow cylinder of mass capital m radius capital r and length l carrying uniform charge of surface charge density sigma okay so this is the cylinder this is actually the cross sectional view uh, it has a charged surface charge density sigma and can rotate without friction about a fixed horizontal axle that coincides with the axis of the cylinder. Several turns of thin light insulating cord are wrapped on the cylinder and a block of mass M is suspended from the free end of the cord. Initially the block is at rest. Find acceleration of the block after it is released, neglect charge transferred, fine. Fringing effects are also neglected here. Uh, acceleration due to gravity is g permeability of the medium inside the cylinder is mu naught that means vacuum is present here fine so let us analyze the situation properly okay so just after releasing the mass actually this small mass m what happens uh, gravity starts acting on this small mass tension comes into action so here there will be t now due to this t there will be an increase in angular velocity of this cylinder now as this cylinder contains some charge so due to this uh, rotation of this cylinder the charge will also rotate so it will create some uh, conduction current and due to that creation of current there will be some magnetic field in this direction that will go into the plane of paper now what happens let us first find out the expression of that magnetic field so basically this whole thing will behave as a solenoid and we know for an infinite solenoid the amount of magnetic field is something like this so this term this n times i term is actually the total current right now if you try to write this total current expression in the form of the total charge we need to write mu naught by l that is the total charge q by t q total charge would be this one divided by the time period right so mu naught by l sigma 2 pi r l expression for the time period would be 2 pi divided by angular velocity at any time t because in fact the time period is also changing so 2 pi 2 pi gets cancelled out l gets cancelled out final expression is mu naught sigma r omega so this is the expression for the magnetic field as you can see it is dependent on the angular velocity now due to this alpha the value of angular velocity will increase hence magnetic field will also increase and due to the increase in magnetic field there will be an increase in flux into this uh, through the solenoid or through the cylinder and due to this increase in magnetic flux there will be an induced electric field in the opposite direction of uh, means in the opposite direction of the actual conduction current and due to this electric field this electric field will actually uh, put some reverse force on the cylinder okay uh, which will try to this electric field will actually try to slow down the rotation of the cylinder so this tension will create a clockwise torque and this uh, induced electric field will create an anti clockwise torque so our next target would be to find out this induced electric field so we'll take the help of faraday's equation that is e dot dl equals minus ddt of the total magnetic flux okay so we can write 2 pi r equals minus uh, let us remove this minus sign we'll take the magnitude only because we already know the direction uh, that would be rate of change of magnetic field times pi capital R square okay so pi gets cancelled out R gets cancelled out so we have 1 by 2 dB dt so if you differentiate this one we will get mu naught sigma R d omega dt so d omega dt is nothing but the angular acceleration alpha so we got the induced electric field okay so this induced electric field will produce a torque okay let tau e be the expression uh, so that would be f times r so force due to this electric field 
will be electric field in the total charge of the cylinder. So, we have half mu naught sigma r alpha okay. q is sigma times 2 pi r l okay. again r. So, the final expression becomes pi mu naught sigma square r to the power 4. So, how many r do we have? 1 um, 1 2 3 ok fine no we have another r we have another r for this magnetic field also ok and this r is also there so here it will be r square r square r square r to the power 4 l and there will be another alpha so this is the expression for the torque that is created due to the induced electric field so the net torque would be the torque due to the tension minus pi mu naught sigma square r to the power 4 l alpha and this would be equal to the moment of inertia of the cylinder that is m r square because it is a thin hollow cylinder times alpha ok. So, r cube r. So, we have t equals to m r plus pi mu naught sigma square r cube l times alpha. Uh, considering that there is no slipping, so alpha would be equal to a times r ok. So, pi mu naught sigma square r square l a. So, we have got the expression for the tension and our second expression would come from this block and that is m g m g minus t equals mass times acceleration. So, we will just put the values of t here. So, m g minus m plus pi mu naught sigma square r square l a equals m a. So, the final expression for acceleration of the block is m g divided by small m plus capital M plus pi mu naught sigma square r square times l. So, this is the expression for the acceleration of the block of mass small m. Okay. So, I think there was only one question uh, acceleration due to gravity of the medium hmm. yeah, fine acceleration of the block yes. Okay. So, this is our final answer. So, I hope you all have found this video helpful and informative. If you are new to this channel, please do subscribe and uh, thanks for all of your love and support. See you in the next one. Peace.